HipFig Travel Channel offers DIY travel video guides for more than 25 cities in Asia, US, and Canada. If you like this video, then subscribe, give us a thumbs up, or a comment. Hello everyone, welcome to HipFig's Beautiful America series, part two of HipFig's Denali National Park and Preserve Alaska, the land of the midnight sun. Why should you visit Denali National Park and Preserve? The chance to see wildlife in their natural habitat and a full view of Mount Denali. The first thing we saw when we entered Denali Park Road right before the Denali Bus Depot was a mama moose and two baby moose feeding near a creek. It was so amazing. Did you know that Denali National Park in Alaska is over 6 million acres and most of it is untouched and restricted to private cars? This Hip Big Travel Guide is part two of two travel guides on Denali National Park and Preserve, which covers the restricted area which can only be accessed by Denali tour or transit buses. If you plan to visit Denali National Park, then this video is a must see for you. If you have not seen part one of Denali National Park and Preserve, take time to watch part one to get the most out of your trip. Please note that if you're coming by train, then take the free shuttle from the visitor center to the Denali Bus Depot. If you're going to a tour on the same day, book an afternoon tour to make sure that you make your departure time. Denali National Park and Preserve just has one road inside and private cars can only drive a short portion till a mile post 15 in the summer. Most sightseeing in Denali is done by bus, either a narrated tour bus or a non-narrated transit bus into the restricted area past milepost 15. Once we reached Denali, we made a left on Denali Park Road from Highway 3. Signs are clearly marked. Once you're on Denali Park Road, you'll pass through Riley Creek Campground on your left and then Denali Bus Depot on your right and further down the road on your right side is the Denali Visitor Center. There's no gate at the park entrance, so you can visit any time of the day or night, which is in summer, as possible with the midnight sun. About 0.5 miles into Denali Park Road, we saw signs for the Denali Bus Depot on the right-hand side, which is Seoul Road. We took a ride on Seoul Road from Denali Park Road into the parking lot of the Bus Depot. The Denali Bus Depot is where you can get information about buses and campgrounds, arrange campground accommodations within the park, purchase and pick up tickets for buses, and catch the buses for the bus tours and transits to several parts of Denali Park past mile post 15 in the restricted area. There is a ticket counter, bathrooms, water refilling station, coffee stand, souvenir store, information booth, and a small theater at the bus depot. The bus depot is open mid-May to September from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you arrive after 7 p.m. and need to check into a campground or pick up bus tickets for the next day, you can do so until 11 p.m. at the Riley Creek Mercantile, located in Riley Creek Campground. Access to Denali Park Road past mile post 15 is only available through a paid Denali tour or transit bus. Bus trips are available only in summer from mid-May through mid-September, and all bus trips are operated by a private operator contracted with the Denali National Park and Preserve. Please note, reservations are highly recommended for the day and time you want. You can purchase online by phone at 1-800-622-7275 or at the Denali Bus Depot. You will also be charged a National Park entrance fee in addition to your bus ticket. If you have an annual pass, please make sure to bring it with you when you pick up your ticket so you don't get charged for this fee Warning, please arrive at least 15 minutes before your departure time. Do not be late. You will end up forfeiting your spot on your bus and will have to be on a wait list with no guarantee of a spot. If there are no spots, then you are stuck and will have to change your reservation for another day for an additional fee. Tour and transit buses are modified school buses and are various colors depending on its type. They do not have bathrooms on board, but stop at rest stops every about every 90 minutes. When the bus has arrived, the staff member will make an announcement on the PA system announcing the time and bus name. Walk out to the designated boarding area and line up for your bus. There are signs at the beginning of each line. Have your ticket ready, not re reservation confirmations. Note. All reservations must be exchanged for a bus ticket at the ticket counter at the Denali Bus Depot. Once on your bus, select your seat. Into the park, it's best to sit on the left side and out of the park, it's best to sit on the right if you have a choice. 
We took a transit bus as we wanted some flexibility with our time and it was less expensive than the tour buses for the destination we wanted to go, so we chose the Wonder Lake Transit Bus. Once we got on our bus, we started on Denali Park Road. Our bus driver welcomed us and gave us some information about the park. Once we got to the Savage River, we crossed the Mile Post 15 Bridge. At the end of the bridge, a park ranger came on board on our bus and greeted us into the restricted area of Denali National Park and Preserve. For your information, we are going to tell you about the types of buses intermittently throughout the video. There are two types of buses that go past Mile Post 15, tour and transit buses. Tour buses are tan and transit buses are green. There are three tour bus routes from shortest to longest. They are the Natural History, the Tundra Wilderness, and the Kantishna Experience. All tour and transit buses begin and end at the Denali Bus Depot. The first stop for all bus types is the Teklanika River Rest Stop at Milepost 30. You will have the option of using the restroom and looking at the river at the overlook. At the overlook, we saw an expansive view of the vast riverbed of the Teklanika River. Teklanika River is 90 miles long and begins at Cantwell Glacier in the Alaskan Range, and then flows north to Nanana River. Many people like to hike here to ford the upper river near Stampede Trail, made famous by two movies. As recently as this summer, unfortunately, people have died trying to get to the abandoned bus. The river is considered class 5, which means very rough and dangerous, so be very careful if you're considering this hike. Our transit bus stopped for about 15 minutes, which was enough for us. We decided to continue on our bus since we didn't have plans to hike here. Changing buses can be a hassle as most buses are full and will take passengers only when they have a spot. Once we left the rest stop, we were greeted by an arctic squirrel, which seemed as fascinated by us as we were of it. I swear at one point I really thought he or she was posing for us. The shortest tour bus trip is the Natural History Tour, which is about five hours round trip and travels to the Teklanika River. Buses for this tour depart from the Denali Bus Depot at 5.30 and 7.30 a.m. and 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. The further you go into the park, the more chances you have of seeing wildlife. So you might want to take a longer tour like the Toklat Wilderness Tour, which is 7 to 8 hours round trip. It includes all of the stops of the Natural History Tour and then goes further to the Tolkat River and Stony Overlook, which provides higher chances to see wildlife. By the way, from May 20th to the 31st, the Tundra Wilderness Tour is shorter because the Denali Park Road doesn't really fully open until June, so the price is a bit cheaper and the trip will be actually one hour less. A snack and water are provided. You can pre-book a box lunch for an additional fee or bring your own. Tour and transit buses make the same rest and overlook stops and stop for views of wildlife and scenery along the way. On our way to the Toklet Rivers rest stop, we saw the, a grizzly bear and doll sheep. You can tell a grizzly from a black bear by the hump on its back. Our transit bus continued past through the Sable Pass and made a quick stop at the Polychrome Overlook with the vast view of the valley below. When we got back on our bus, we drove past some doll sheep resting along the side of the mountains. By the way, all buses and all rest stops are wheelchair accessible. Our transit bus made a stop at the Toklet Rivers rest stop at milepost 53. We used the facilities and stopped at the tent visitor center. We saw some fallen off antlers and we went down to the riverbed to touch the cold translucent water. We were given about 15 to 20 minutes here and continued on our same transit bus further into the park. At this rest stop, you can see the many braided tributaries of the 85 mile Toklet River bed. The braiding is caused as a result of the three flow sources of the Toklet River, which is the glacial melt at the head of the valley and the runoff of the precipitation from the sides of the valley and groundwater upswellings. We were given about 15 to 20 minutes here and we continued on our same transit bus further into the park. Along the way we saw a young male caribou grazing in a valley. You can tell it's male and young by the size of its antlers. 
When wildlife is visible, the bus will stop and provide time to see and take pictures. Our bus driver was very good at spotting wildlife. As we went further into the Denali National Park and Preserve on our transit bus, we could see Mount Denali, once called Mount McKinley, peeking out in the distance as it was a really clear day. The next major and popular stop is the Eilison Visitor Center. Eilison Visitor Center is open in summer only from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. It's located at milepost 66 of the Denali Park Road. Restrooms are open 24 hours. Eilison Visitor Center can be reached by tour and transit buses with destination Eilison Visitor Center, Wonder Lake, and Katishna. You can go on a ranger-led program, look at small displays of art, and on a clear day see a full view of Mount Denali and the Alaska Range. We were lucky that it cleared up for us to capture the majestic view of Denali. You can also take a hike on the three of the trails on your own or with a ranger-led hike in the area. There is a water refill station at Allison, so bring a refillable water bottle. Our transit bus stopped here for about 30 minutes. This is a good place to picnic if you brought a lunch. No food or drinks are sold here, however. At this point, I would like to provide some information on transit buses. There are several routes from least to the greatest distance. They are the Toklet River, Eilison Visitor Center, Wonder Lake, Kantishna, and Special Buses, Camper Shuttle Bus, and Discovery Hike. Transit buses are cheaper than tour buses, and they stop every 90 minutes, and it stop at most places where the tour buses stop. Transit buses are green and will cost differently depending on the distance. Make sure to bring whatever you may need for the whole day, including rain gear, an extra layer for warm, sunscreen, snacks, lunch, and plenty of water and a refillable water bottle. What's nice about a transit bus is that you can get on and off a transit bus at designated stops so long as they have space for you. Please be aware that you may have to wait if you get off a bus because of the capacity of the bus. You will be put on a waiting list for the next available transit bus at the designated stops. If you plan to take a Discovery Hike route, aka the Disco Hike, you'll have to sign up for the hike one or two days in advance at the Denali Visitor Center. After we left Eilison Visitor Center, we made our way to our final destination, Wonder Lake. Wonder Lake and Wonder Lake Campground is located at milepost 85 on the Denali Park Road. We took a hike from Wonder Lake to the Reflection Kettle Pond, but it was not clear enough for the mountains to reflect at the Reflection Pond. Unless it's a super clear day, Reflection Kettle Ponds do not reflect the mountains, so consider that before you take this transit bus and take this 2.5 mile hike. From the shore of Wonder Lake on a clear day, you can also get magnificent views of the mountains and crystal clear water. By the way, for your information, wear mosquito repellent here. Once we finished our hike, we hiked back to Wonder Lake Campground and got on the next transit bus headed back to the Denali Bus Depot. FYI, just for your consideration, on the way back, we talked to a couple who took the tour bus the day before and they said it was almost the same as the transit bus with some minor differences. Driving back on our transit bus in the early evening, we were treated to another grizzly bear and her cub crossing the meadows. Keep in mind that animals are most visible in the cooler parts of hot days, so plan on going on a tour or transit bus in the early morning or later in the afternoon to have the best chances for viewing wildlife. As we got closer to mile post 15, we saw another large caribou and more doll sheep. We were really fortunate on our bus trip to the restricted part of the Denali Park that we saw so many animals. Although it's a long day, a bus tour or transit bus into the restricted part of Denali is a unique and worthwhile experience and a must do when in Alaska. Happy travels! Go to hipfig.com for more information or go to our Hipfig Travel Channel on YouTube and be sure to subscribe for regular updates.